as we are in this series, Encounter, uh, I've titled today's message, What is Stealing Your Praise? It was seven or eight years ago. My family went to Branson, Missouri, and we went to just to hang out, just to relax, to do a little uh, vacation time together. And as we were in Branson, we, Branson we, we pulled up at the outlet mall. And as we were at the outlet mall, Tiffany, she took off her rings and she was putting lotion on her hands. And she put her rings on her lap in the car. And then she got up and got out of the car and did not realize she forgot to put her rings back on her finger. They fell onto the ground right outside of the, the car. And the car next to us, here's what happened. We went inside the store not realizing her wedding ring was on the ground. And instead of the car next to us looking for an opportunity to help us, they looked for an opportunity to steal from us, and they stole my wife's wedding ring. We felt violated. We were angry. There were a lot of emotions. Tiffany felt guilt. We could not believe her wedding ring got stolen. And here's what I want you to understand. There are things on the lookout <laughs> trying to steal your praise. That there are things looking for the opportunity to take away the very thing you were created to do, and that is to praise the Lord. Did you realize you were actually created to praise God? The scripture says in Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 21, the people I formed myself, God says, that they may proclaim my Praise. Psalm chapter 113 and verse number one says, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, you his servants. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be praised both now and forevermore from the rising of the sun to, to the place where it sets. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Psalm 148 and verse 5 says, Let everything that, 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 that everything give praise to to the Lord for he issued his command and they came into being Psalm 150 verse number six says let everything that has breath praise the Lord praise the Lord we are created to praise God and we can't let anything steal our praise Jesus references this. He talks about this in Luke chapter 19 and in verse number 37. This is kind of our, our key verses for today's message. It says this, when he came near the place where the road goes down to the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, teacher, rebuke your disciples. In other words, tell them to stop praising you. And Jesus says in verse 40, I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. I like how the message version reads. It says, but he said, if they keep quiet, the stones would do it for them, shouting praise. Jesus says, if my disciples keep quiet, I will have the stones cry out and worship me. I created them to worship me. And if they won't worship me, I'll get something else to step in and worship me in their place. And people's church, we can't let anything step in and replace us from praising our great God. And there are things that are wanting to step in and steal your praise. I don't know about you. I'm not going to let a rock steal my praise. I, I'm not going to let a stone steal my praise. And I want to talk to you for a few moments from the life of David. And in the life of David, I want us to look at Five praise stealers. Five things that's trying to rob and steal from you the very thing you were created 
to do. Let me give you a little backdrop of the story that we're going to study in 2 Samuel chapter number 6. The Bible talks about this, that, that the, the Philistines, they came and they stole the Ark of the Covenant from the nation of Israel. The Ark of the Covenant represented the presence of God. It represented the favor of God. And they captured the Ark of the Covenant. And then years later, David and, and his army went and attacked the Philistines and they took back the Ark of the Covenant. And as they were coming back to Jerusalem with the Ark of the Covenant, this was a historic moment for the, the nation of Israel. As they were bringing the Ark back to Jerusalem, they began to praise God and David began to praise God with all of his might. David did not allow the praise stealers to steal his praise. And from David, I want to point out five praise stealers in this portion of scripture. And the first praise stealer is position, position. I want you to notice this in 2 Samuel chapter 6 and verse 14. It says, wearing a linen ephod, David was dancing before the Lord with all his might. And the reason this is so important is because David is the king of Israel and, and kings wore, wore their royal robe. But David laid aside his royal robe and he put on a priestly robe to begin to praise God with all his might. David did not allow his position to rob him of praising God. He laid down his position and he picked up praise to God. And I think it's easy for us if we're not careful to allow our positions in life to rob us of praising God. And I want just to remind you that no matter the position you hold in life, you are created to praise the name of the Lord. Praising God is the most important position any of us could ever have. Don't let the position of being a dad or the position of being a mom or the position of being a grandparent or a spouse or the position of your career, whether that would be a waitress or a waiter or a city employee or a teacher or a CEO, a doctor or a lawyer or a janitor or a business owner or a cashier or an administrative assistant. Don't let your position steal your praise. People's church, every single day, lay aside your position and pick up praise to God. You will never elevate to a position that will cause you not to be qualified to praise the Lord. You will never graduate out of praising God. Our position, lay it aside. Because we're created to praise the Lord. I want you to see a, a second praise stealer, and that is pride. Notice in 2 Samuel chapter 6 and verse 16. It says, as the ark of the Lord was entering the city of David, Michael, daughter of Saul, watched from a window. And when she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him in her heart. And so David was leaping. He was dancing before the Lord. And history lets us know that this kind of dancing was normally done by women. You would never find the king of a nation dancing on the city streets. You would just never see that. Kings were too dignified. They were too kingly. They had too much dignity. They, they, they had too much stature to dance in the streets, but not David. David got on the streets in front of all the people and he danced and he leaped before the Lord with all of his might. David did not allow pride to stop him from praise. And so many people let pride steal their praise. And people's church, don't let pride steal your praise. Here's what pride does. Pride will cause you to be filled with insecurity. It'll cause you to be filled with fear. And you'll be thinking, well, well, what do other people think about me? 
Well, I don't know if I'll praise God because they might laugh at me. I, I don't know if I'll praise God because they may make fun of me. I may look weird. I may feel weird. All of that is rooted in pride. And we've got to lay aside our pride and praise the Lord. And somebody says, well, you know, I'll, I'll praise God. I will I'll clap, you know, I'll maybe sing quietly to myself. But I won't sing too loud. But that lifting hands stuff, no, no, people might think I'm a little weird. I can't do that. That, you know, bowing and kneeling before the Lord, I, I would just never, never do that. And, and pride will keep us from worshiping the Lord. And I want to encourage you, lay aside your pride and praise the Lord. You were created to praise God. I want you to see a third, a third praise Stealer, and that is people. People will steal your praise if you let them. Second Samuel chapter six and verse number twenty says, "When David returned home to bless his household, Michael, daughter of Saul, came out to meet him and said, "How the king of Israel has distinguished himself today, going around half naked in full view of the slave girls of his servants, as any vulgar fellow would." People's church, <laughs> can I tell you, she's been kind of nasty right there. She, she's, been, she's been kind of ugly. She, she's been kind of, kind of mean. David's wife was attacking him. She was mocking him because he was praising God. And I, I can only imagine what other people were saying to David, the king of Israel, as he's praising the Lord. Hey, hey, hey. What's, what's wrong with the king? What's he doing? I can't believe that I've never seen a king do that before. And I can just see some of his cabinet saying, hey, hey, king, stop it. You're making us look bad. You're making yourself look bad. Stop all of that. You're not being kingly. I, I can just hear the chatter from the crowd. But David did not allow people to steal his praise. Matter of fact, I want you to listen to what David said to his wife. I think, that, I think this is so powerful in 2 Samuel chapter 6 and verse 22. He says, I will become even more undignified than this and I will be humiliated in my in my own eyes wow but by these slave girls you spoke of I will be held in honor David said no one nobody no thing is going to steal my praise to God because God is worthy of my praise and people's church don't allow any person to steal your praise, that they may question your praise, they may laugh at your praise, they may mock your praise, they may get angry because of your praise, but don't let people steal your praise. You were created to praise the Lord. I, I want you to see a fourth praise stealer. I, I think this is so, so key, and that is perspective. Perspective can be a praise stealer. In 2 Samuel chapter 6 and verse number 21, it says, David said to Michael, it was before the Lord who chose me rather than your father or anyone from his house when he appointed me ruler over the Lord's people. I will celebrate before the Lord. Michael, David's wife, he, he, she had the wrong perspective. She thought David was just trying to show off when he was dancing on the city streets. And David said, no, 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 no. You got it all wrong. You're getting it twisted in your mind. Let me give you the right perspective. He said, I did this before the Lord. I did this to praise the Lord. I did this to honor the Lord. You see, wrong perspectives can steal your praise. And let me just share some wrong perspectives that'll steal your praise. P people have the perspective, a wrong perspective that praise and worship is, is a church thing. 
It's just something that you do at church, and that's a wrong perspective. You do it in your home. I hope today in this service you, you lifted your hand, and you praised the Lord, you sang the songs, and you're lifting, up, you're, you're lifting up the name of Jesus and giving a hallelujah because it's just not a church thing. It's who we are. We're created to praise. Another wrong perspective is it's for super spiritual people or it's for, it's for pastors. No, no, no. It's for every created being. We're created to praise the Lord. And every Christian should be giving God praise. Another wrong perspective is if I like the music. Well, I'll praise God if it's my song, if I like the music, if it's a hymn or if it's a a gospel song or if it's contemporary Christian song. Well, if it's a fast song, I only like the fast songs or I only like the slow songs. That's when I praise the Lord. No, that's the wrong perspective. So some people think this, the wrong perspective is they think praise is for them. I'll praise God when I feel like it. No, God said, I'll make the rocks cry out if you don't praise me because praise is not for you. Praise is for God because he's worthy of all of our praise. We don't praise for us. We praise him because he is worthy of our praise. And the psalmist said in chapter 34 and verse number one, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Don't let the wrong perspectives steal your praise. Let me give you a fifth praise stealer, a fifth praise stealer, and that is pain. Pain. I want to show you what happens right before David praises the Lord. Notice in 2 Samuel chapter 6 and verse 6, it says, when they came to the threshing floor of Nacon, Uzzah, uh, Uzzah reached out and took hold of the ark of God because of the oxen. The Lord's anger burned against Uzzah because of his irreverent act. Therefore, God struck him down and he died there beside the ark of God. Then David was angry because the Lord's wrath had broken out against Uzzah. And to this day, that place is called Perez Uzzah. You have to understand this. Uzzah was David's nephew. And David, because Uzzah touched the Ark of the Covenant, which was forbidden, he died. David watched his nephew die a tragic death death right before his eyes and no doubt David is filled with pain he was angry he's emotional as he watches his nephew die and yet David did not allow pain to steal his praise people's church hear me today David pressed past And he stepped into praise. The pain of his nephew dying did not stop this king from jumping and leaping and from praising God with all of his heart. And right now we're in a season in our nation, in our world, where there are pain and there's problems everywhere. My goodness. COVID-19, even some of you in our church family have have contacted us and let us know that that you have the virus. There are others that fear is, is, and that creates a pain of itself. Some of you, it's, you've been home and you've been isolated and, and some of you are facing depression and anxiety, pain. Some of you used your children, your, your home, and you wish they'd go back to school. <laughs> and and it, there's some pain. There's family pain and there's tension. And you and your spouse, before this, this, this virus outbreak, you weren't getting along very good. And now you're having to be home a whole lot more together. And, and there's relationship pain. Businesses have closed and some of you have lost your job. Some of you are losing income. And it's real pain. 
and people's church, what I want you to understand is you cannot allow pain to steal your praise. People's church, hear your pastor today. You've got to be willing to step over pain into praise. I want you to hear this last verse in Psalm 69 and verse 29. Here's what David says. He says, but as for me, afflicted and in pain... May your salvation, God, protect me. I will praise God's name in song and glorify him with thanksgiving. David says in the middle of the pain, I'm not going to let pain steal my praise. And, and somebody got right now in between you and your praise is COVID-19. And you've got to step over pain and you got to step into praise. It might be a job loss that you're facing and it's an obstacle in your way. You got to step over the job loss and the pain and you got to step into praise. It may be relational pain that you're dealing with. You got to step over relational pain and step into praise and say, God, you're still worthy. God, I still give you glory. God, I still lift up your name. God, I'm concerned about the future and it's causing me some pain. I've been dealing with some depression and it's causing me some pain. Step over depression. Step over anxiety. Step over worry. And give God some praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. And I can tell you this. He's a way maker. Miracle worker. Promise keeper. Come on, Shannon. Minister to us right now. Give him praise. Give him praise. He'll make a way if you praise him. He'll see you through if you praise him. Don't let anything steal your praise. Don't let anything steal your praise. He'll make a way. He'll make a way. Come on, in your living room, praise him. In your car, praise him. In your bathroom, praise him. Sitting on the floor, give God some praise. You were created to praise the Lord. He's going to make a way.